Welcome everyone to the Moisky News for March the 22nd, 2021. Today I'd like to talk about, as you can tell from the title, how the EU are going to be potentially breaking the law because they're salty. We're going to need some context, so I'm going to provide it. I'm sure many in the United Kingdom have received a text message alert, especially if you have pre-existing health conditions, indicating that you are eligible for a COVID, air quotes, vaccine, or the first dose of it. I myself have received this text, yes, this one here, and due to the government push, over 50% of all United Kingdom adults have now received their first dose, which is a massive success based on government projections and where they are now, because the government wants to get this back to pre-COVID conditions by June. It's our own version of Operation Warp Speed, but we call it Light Canter. The UK government itself can be credited for securing millions of doses before any EU country, or just the EU in general. The EU have been flagging behind, to the point where many EU nations are back in another lockdown, France more notably. Essentially, the EU failed its original purpose or prime directive, which was trade. Because of that, they've gotten salty. This has caused friction between the United Kingdom and the European Union, as we managed to secure millions of doses from AstraZeneca, which led to Boris having to lay the smack down via a phone call over Christmas with Ursula von der Leyen when it came to the European Union threatening to withhold our vaccines. These are deals that were secured, Therefore, those deals are legally binding. The company that makes them have their own issues. More notably, some have to source certain ingredients that are only produced in, for example, the Netherlands and another ingredient from Belgium. This is well known. It's not something that can simply be produced in one nation. Although, the majority of all vaccines are being mass-produced in India but the ingredients are still being obtained from elsewhere. The more recent incident concerning friction between the United Kingdom and the European Union concerns the European Union threatening to join forces with the French and German governments in withholding 19 million doses of AstraZeneca, which is quite interesting to me because France doesn't even use it, they still won't, unless it's those aged over 55 but under 65, because those two nations more notably believed there was a risk of blood clotting. Now, this has been debunked, and they have accepted that. But because of that delay, Germany and France are still buried balls deep in new lockdowns, which means they want their doses. It's also worth pointing out, the EU nations have been critical of a very product they are now trying to get which is really, really strange to me. By blocking these supplies, they block up to 20% of the UK's vaccines, and this would in turn slow the United Kingdom's rollout, which, by the way, is still the highest in Europe, because all the other nations didn't get good. We're above Turkey. I'm surprised Turkey's even on this list, for many reasons, but let's just go with the fact they're not in the EU. A renewed threat came from Ursula von der Leyen via an interview with a German media group, Funky, where she admitted discussing the option of banning a planned export, adding that's the message to AstraZeneca. You fulfil your contract with Europe first before you start supplying to other countries. We have received nothing from the British while we are supplying them with vaccines. This sounds very nationalist, doesn't it? and also a breach of all the contracts signed by us first, guaranteeing a certain number of doses by a certain time, which would mean da, 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 the EU would in fact be complete and utter smegheads. This hardline approach from Ursula von der Leyen has actually won her support from France's European Affairs Minister Clement Bone, who has said, we need a principle of reciprocity. Supply others if they supply us in accordance with signed contracts. 
The position is also backed by Italy and Denmark, but Netherlands, Belgium, Poland, Sweden and Ireland fundamentally disagree with this because they believe it could have a wider impact on a vaccine trade war, which they won't win. Our contracts were signed long before you idiots decided, oh whoa, we want a piece of this pie as well, even though our two biggest nations said no. The head of AstraZeneca has pointed out, a lot of the issues with shortages come to the complexity of the production process, which I earlier mentioned, when it came to ingredients being sourced from other nations. Pfizer have outright just said, don't you dare threaten us. I am a tad surprised at many EU nations who spent months dumping on AstraZeneca with rather interesting bogus information when it came to its effectiveness to now say, well, now that the EU medical agency has said it's fine, you need to prioritise us first. I say a tad. It's like more eyebrow raising at best. But only because I'm British and we look down on people like this. We were accused, the UK that is, of breaking the terms of the withdrawal agreement. You yourselves are breaking international law by threatening to hold vaccines hostage unless you are prioritised over us. Breaking a contract cause dibs, even though we called them as well.